This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I love miniature painting and I loved YouTube, but honestly, every year YouTube gets harder and harder. It seems like no matter how much time I dedicate to this between my day job and everything else, it just never seems like enough. So that's why for 2023, I have decided to make a big decision and I'm going full-time YouTube. Okay, I've been hinting at this for a while, but in this video, I'm answering your questions, talking about the future of my channel and painting my most wished for model ever. This week I'm painting the Flower Witch, which is the miniature that inspired me to take up this hobby at all. She was one of my first commissions and she was my very first blog post where I wrote about how I did the diorama base. At the time, I had only the faintest glimmer of hope that maybe this would become a full-time job for me one day. And it seemed so fitting that to celebrate this big life moment that I finally paint her again. What will going full-time mean for your channel? In the beginning, not much. To be honest, I am holding back tears with how stressed I am right now. So it would mean the world to me if you would go support me on Patreon as well as like and comment on this video. <laughs> where there is going to be a big change though is on my Patreon where I will be offering more PDFs, more exclusive videos, and in general just exclusive content that you won't be able to get anywhere else. The other big exciting thing is to talk about me releasing my own miniatures, which I will talk about later. What inspired you to start your channel? Originally, I was a college art professor, and though I had a few classes, I wasn't able to cobble together enough to make a living. So I took a day job as a graphic designer and photographer, but I really missed teaching. I really love the smile that people get when they finally figure something out, or when I can see their heart swell with inspiration. I just feel those emotions so strongly in myself, I get this intense joy of seeing it happen to other people. So I thought that maybe making YouTube videos would give me that same feeling. So when I painted this model five years ago, I thought that my client gave me a recast. The model was incredibly brittle, came to me broken, came to me with air pockets in the resin that I then had to fill with green stuff, and just in general was so poor quality, I thought that surely it could not be the real thing. Five years later, I am here to tell you as I am painting the exact same model that nope, this model is just crap. Have your cats approved you going full time? When I started my YouTube channel, the cats were an integral part of my marketing plan because everyone loves cats. So it's finally time for Mochi and Cardamom to get their own website using Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to start your online presence or online business. Squarespace is so easy, the cats could do it themselves. There is a wide range of pre-designed templates, drag and drop features like galleries, bios, blogs, and more, which means more time for petting the cats and that everyone across the world can get their adorable mini witch familiar fix. I can link their website to my social media so you can see their adorable antics on YouTube and Instagram. And you can even own mini witch familiar merchandise through Squarespace's print on demand feature. No matter the reason for your new website, check out squarespace.com today to start your free trial. And when you are ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash lilamev and use code lilamev for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Also, yes, the cats are thrilled about me going full-time. What is your biggest concern about going full-time and what are you most excited about? Honestly, the only reason I didn't go full-time quite a while ago was because of insurance. As for most exciting, there are two things that I'm really excited for. First is having more time to paint miniatures. The second is spending more time with my family. You might think that as a miniature painter YouTuber that I would have spent the majority of my YouTube allotted time painting miniatures. That would be incorrect. In fact, I spent most of my time editing. Any time that was dedicated to painting, I usually spent cutting corners to get the model done so I could start video editing. 
Things like only painting the front half of the model, not even actually assembling the model and just assembling it with hot glue and poster tacks, and then photoshopping out those supports for the final images. And if you look close, you can even see that the paint isn't dry all the way on some of my final turntable images. So I'm really looking forward to getting to paint for me and not for the clock. For family, I'm looking forward to getting to spend quality time with my family that is separate from me decompressing from YouTube. Usually what would happen is that I would finally have some spare time and I would end up just sitting in front of the TV, not really spending time with my family. I have been so busy that I've had to schedule eating dinner with my husband weeks in advance. So I'm really looking forward to getting to do things that normal married couples with cats get to do. Go to the movies, go on walks, eat meals together. So yeah, that's really what I'm looking forward to. Would you ever consider releasing your own miniature line? Before I started YouTube, I had two paths ahead of me. Either I was going to learn to sculpt so that I could create the badass women models that I wanted to see in the hobby, or I could try to become a big time YouTuber and eventually get to the point where I could hire someone to sculpt the badass female miniatures that I wanted to see in the hobby. And we can tell how things ended up. The plan was to do a Kickstarter, but I'm not sure how feasible that is anymore. There is no doubt that there will eventually be Lyle of Mev miniatures, it's just how you all access these miniatures that's up for debate. It's really important to me to offer physical models, because the only reason I have a 3D printer is because Elgu sent me one. However, resin casting is very, very expensive and difficult to find studios to work with. So I'm sort of considering maybe working with some individual 3D printers and having them print my models and then ship them out for me. I don't know. The main thing is, is that I want my models to feel really special and I just don't really feel like downloading a file from my mini factory or wherever really gives that same emotional experience. So I know those are two separate issues, but that's sort of where I'm at. So if you have any ideas for how you think I could best sell and distribute models, please let me know down in the comments. How do you balance making clickbait videos and passion projects? I break my videos down into two categories. One, videos for YouTube, and two, videos for Patreon. Videos for YouTube are videos that are meant to get a lot of views. They are clickbaity, they're about Warhammer, they're about whatever the latest trend is, and their goal is just to get as many views as possible. They're not necessarily the videos that I want to make, but hopefully I will still enjoy them anyway. Videos that are for Patreon are videos that are for my core audience. They're for people who want to watch me because it's me. They give a glimpse into who I am as a person. They talk about my love of art history. This is definitely a Patreon video. Patreon videos usually don't perform as well, but I can certainly hope that they'll perform well. Really, the point of Patreon videos is to drive people to Patreon, because Patreon is really where I get to build my community. How do you get over a skill plateau? I have found that the best way to get over a skill plateau is to do something that is just a few steps above where you think you're at. So maybe that's non-metallic metal or object source lighting, or maybe just something like trying to do purple shadows to green highlights. Something that you would not normally try. But don't pick something too far out of your comfort zone. We don't want you to get deterred if you mess up. And that's one of the big things, is accepting that you might fail and have to strip and start again. The journey is far more important than the destination. The other way that you can do this is a more creative approach. Maybe you listen to a song and you're really inspired by the tone of this music and you want to try to illustrate a similar tone in your model. Or maybe you just want to recreate your favorite era of art history. Either way, the important thing is that you choose something you are excited about because that excitement is what's going to keep you driven if 
and or when you fail. In what ways have you noticed the hobby change in the time you've been a part of it? I've been painting miniatures for five years now and things have definitely changed. The biggest one is how open and welcoming the community now feels. Or at least the people who make it feel open and welcome are being a lot louder than those who do not. It used to be that being a woman miniature painter was very odd. And honestly, I accredit some of my success to the fact that I'm a woman and I was an anomaly. But with events like 28 Mags, a female space marine project, and the fabulous space marine project for June's Pride Month has really opened it up and made the community feel a lot more welcoming. Even if it always was that more welcoming, it's so much more obvious these days. Painting wise, what has really changed is the expectation of what an amazing miniature looks like. It used to be that the highest caliber of miniature painters were doing photorealistic or maybe even hyper photorealistic. But lately, things have started to become a lot more artistic and colorful and painterly and just moving away from that photorealism being the only thing that makes a model amazing. And so I'm all here for that. And it's been a change that has been really interesting to see as well as one that I'm very happy with. You may notice that this flower, which looks nigh identical to the first one that I painted. And you know, I tried really hard to come up with a different color scheme and it just didn't work. This is the right color scheme. So while I try to do something unique, sorry, you get purple like always. What keeps you inspired? When a miniature is going well, I get this flutter in my heart, this overwhelming sense of passion and drive that just exudes from me to the point that I can't help but smile and just, I feel this euphoria about miniature painting. And when I am not getting that feeling, I'm chasing that feeling. As far as YouTube goes, when a video performs poorly, I honestly get pretty disappointed to the point that I have actually considered quitting a few times because I've had a string of videos that have done so poorly. But what keeps me inspired in those moments is all of you the comments that you write on the videos, the notes you send me on Instagram, the really personal ones that tell me that I finally helped something click for you. Those are the sorts of messages that keep me going when I'm at my darkest times. So if you're still here, that means that you're amongst my core fans. Thank you so much for everything that you do. You know the drill, like, comment, subscribe. This is the most important time. Go support me on Patreon. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.